Hello Logic people, welcome back to my garage. Let's get back to Carol Diagrams. This time, we're going to be using Carol Diagrams to test for logical equivalence. Whether um, two or more categorical statements are logically equivalent with each other. So let's, let's pick two statements right, right away here. Uh, let's take a statement here. No wolves are vegan. Let's take that statement. And let's compare it with another statement here. Uh, let's do all wolves are. And now we're going to get something that's outside the standard form. Slightly tweaked. All, wo all wolves are non-vegan. So what we're going to do is take these two statements. We're going to diagram them. If the diagrams are identical, the two statements are logically equivalent. If the two diagrams are identical, then the two statements represented in the diagrams are logically equivalent. You actually look at um, each of the diagrams and compare them. If the two diagrams are not identical, they don't look the same, then the two statements are not logically equivalent. I'm not going to write that down, but hopefully, hopefully you can see that. All right. Let's diagram no wolves are vegan. Well, first of all, we have two categories in play right here, wolves and vegans. Um, let's put the subject category in here on this left-hand side here, capital W, and then non-Ws right here, non-wolves right here. Up here, let's put V for vegans, and then non-V non for non-vegans. No wolves are vegan. Um, can you diagram that? Think about that. With Carol diagrams so far, what we've learned is you use a small x to say there's at least one thing, and you use a zero to represent um, a claim that there's nothing in a region. No wolves are vegan. I kind of set it up pretty giving you a pretty straightforward uh, statement to begin with. You're never going to have a wolf that is a vegan. So hopefully you put a zero and one. Does that make sense? There's no overlap between those two sets. Set of wolves, set of vegans. That's one way to look at it. So you put a zero in region one. Now, all wolves are non-vegan. This might be a little trickier to diagram. The first thing to realize, though, is that you want to begin with your second diagram. It's got to look initially the same way. In other words, it's got to be set up the same way. If it's not set up the same way, then this test here, looking to see whether the, the diagrams look identical, wouldn't really work. We want to initially set them up the exact same way. Wolves go here, W goes here, V goes right there. All wolves are non-vegan. Okay, so the first thing to realize is that we're talking about wolves. We're talking about wolves. So um, wherever your, you know, your symbols are going to go, they're going to go where the wolves are. Now, where are the wolves, so to speak? The wolves are in regions one and two. Okay, right? That's the dangerous region. I'm sorry. Okay, no. That's where the wolves are, in one or two. So wherever your symbols are going to go, it's going to go in, the, in one of those two regions. Okay, now what are you saying about wolves? You're saying that you're never going to meet a wolf who is vegan. Isn't that what you're saying? All wolves are non-vegan. Or you put it this way, every time you meet a wolf, every time you encounter a wolf in these regions, right? Or in the world, or in the universe, it will be non-vegan. Okay? So, you're not saying you will ever encounter a wolf, but if you do, it's going to be in region two. 
So you're going to leave that open. You do not rule out this region, but you are ruling out this region. Okay? There's nothing in region 1. What does this tell you? That these two statements, no wolves are vegan, is the same thing as saying all wolves are non-vegan. All right? Does that make sense right there? Let's do let's look at two statements that are not logically equivalent. Okay? Let's do it this way. Let's look at this. Um, let's do um, all wolves are carnivores. All wolves are carnivores. Um, then let's do let's see no no carnivores are wolves. Okay. Now let's set up these two diagrams in the same way. Right here, W not W, C not C. See the order here? The first term I see, it turns out it's the subject term I'm going to put over here. Um, to the left of region one right here. Carnivores, the second term I see, I'm gonna put right above region one. Now, I know here in the second statement here, no carnivores or wolves, the subject term is now carnivores. But, we are trying to see whether these two statements are logically equivalent. So don't put a C right there. Because then it's gonna be hard to see logical equivalence. So what you do is just you kind of go off of what the first statement tells you. So, you're going to talk about wolves first here. Or you're just going to put wolves right there. So, the diagrams are going to initially look identical. You need to set it up that way. Now, let's diagram no carnivores are, are wolves. Well, let's, it doesn't matter which order you do it in. You're going to be diagramming both of these. But this one is pretty easy to diagram you know that there's no overlap between the set of carnivores and the set of wolves. So right away, you can rule out region... You have four choices. One, two, three, four. Actually, you only have two choices, right? Because you're talking about carnivores. So you're only going to put your symbol in either region one or three. Which one is it? Region one makes the most sense. No carnivores are wolves. Okay, it's a universal claim about all carnivores. You're never going to find a carnivore that is a wolf. Now we go over here. Diagram this statement. All wolves are carnivores. Um, okay, first of all, your diagramming is going to go, your symbolization is going to go into regions, let's see, one or two. You will not be talking about three and four. Why? Because that's not where the wolves live. It's not where the wolves are. Okay. All right. All wolves are carnivores. Every time you meet a wolf, if you ever meet a wolf, for all wolves in existence, if there are even wolves in existence, but every time there is a wolf, it will be a carnivore. So if you have a wolf here living, right, at least could be living in one or two here, it actually will have to be living in region 1. Okay? So do not rule out region 1. This could be populated with wolves. Right? It, there could be some kind of wolf here. This is a bad wolf. This is a wolf here. Um, actually, wolves' tails don't look like that. Okay, in any case, if there's going to be a wolf, it's going to be in region 1, isn't it? It will not be in region 2. It will not be in region two. So let me erase this right here. Well, that's a bit. There you go. If you're going to diagram all wolves or carnivores, the zero should go in two. Now you look at these two statements. The, the uh, diagrams are not identical, so these are not. These two statements are not 
logically equivalent. Even though intuitively you might thought they were or something, actually you probably didn't, right? But um, this is a way of testing your intuition. These are not logically equivalent. All right. All right, let's try this example. Some cats are vegetarians. Uh, by the way, that is true, um, but I think generally it's like forced vegetarianism. Does that mean they're vegetarian? Well, okay, something to think about. All right, some cats are vegetarians, and we're gonna compare that with some vegetarians are cats. By the way, um, if you look at these two statements, there's really only one change. These two terms are switched. By the, this is called the operation of conversion. Okay, so right here, this statement was converted into this. Sometimes you've heard something like, um, let's see, or conversely, vice versa. You've heard those kinds of terms. Conversely refers to conversion. So you switch the terms. Some cats are vegetarians. Is that the same thing as saying some vegetarians are cats? Let's test this. Right here, put the C for cats, non-C for non-cats, V for vegetarians, non-V for non-vegetarians. Okay, right here, again, we're going to look at this diagram, see how that's set up, follow that order here. Okay, let's diagram some cats are vegetarians. Um, you're not going to use a, a zero, because a zero, right, um, is only used for universal claims. This is not a universal claim. This is making a particular claim. It's making a claim of existence. It's saying at least one cat is a vegetarian. So what we're going to use is the X. And we need to figure out where the X goes. We're talking about cats. Where do cats live, so to speak? One and two. So the X will need to go in these regions somehow. Well, there's at least one cat that is a member of a set of vegetarians. So the X should go there. Hopefully this is pretty straightforward. Okay. Now here, you're talking about vegetarians. Vegetarians live, so to speak, in regions one and three. Um, at least one vegetarian who lives in this kind of vertical column here is a cat. Now, of course, there could be um, there could be more, right? You can say. By the way, three X's like that would mean at least three vegetarians are cats. Okay, you're not saying anything about the other regions. There could be there could be um, Members of these other regions, we're not saying anything about that. All right. Now, look at this. Look at these two diagrams. They're identical. There's an X in region one in both of these. So, saying some vegetarians are cats is the same thing as saying some vegetarians, right? Some cats are vegetarians is the same thing as saying some vegetarians are cats. Okay? So, conversion keeps logical equivalence with regard to at least I statements. That's an I statement. That's an I statement. Okay. If I tweak this just a little bit, if I tweak it just a little bit, so if I put this negation right there, this not there, Oh, oh yeah, it's still conversion. We're still going to do conversion, converted. Um, and I just add the word not right there. So I'm changing the I proposition we began with to an O proposition, an O statement, and then we convert it to another O statement. We just switch the term, so it's, all, it's also an O statement. Okay? Now the question is, are they logically equivalent? Some cats are not vegetarians. The X is going to go into regions one or two right here. This time it's going to go into region two. There's at least one cat who is a 
right? Not a vegetarian, or you could say is a non-vegetarian. Some vegetarians are not cats. Again, you're talking about regions one and three. There's at least one vegetarian who is not a cat. So the X should go in region three. Now you look at these two statements. They're not identical. These two, then, these two diagrams are not identical. So therefore, these statements here are not identical. Conversion does not keep logical equivalence when you're talking about O statements. Make sense so far? All right, we're going to learn something a little bit different here, a little bit trickier right here. Okay, let's do this. All wolves are carnivores. We've done this one before, I believe. All wolves are carnivores. Let's set that up. Oh, it's not working too well. All wolves are carnivores. I'll get that done. Now, let's do this. It is false that some wolves are not carnivores. So take that statement. It is false that some wolves are not carnivores. And we're going to compare it to all wolves are carnivores. So, by the way, this is a standard form statement. It's a standard form A statement. This is not in standard form. That is, right? Now, it's equivalent to something in standard form, but it's not presented that way. Okay. Let's diagram this statement right now. All wolves are carnivores. Well, we already saw how to do that. And remember that? The zero goes in two. Any wolf you ever meet will be a carnivore. All right. Now, let's begin the diagram the same way here. Let's set it up the same way. Talking about wolves and carnivores. Now, let me tell you how to diagram these kinds of statements. When, you, when the statement begins with, and it is false, or it is not true that, something like that. What you do is this. You, I'm gonna cover this up. You initially diagram, kind of pencil in, the diagram for the statement that's not being falsified. In other words, diagram, some wolves are not carnivores. You can do it in your head, or you can put it here, I'm just going to put it right here. Some wolves are not carnivores. That's going to be an X. And let's see, it would go right here. There's at least one wolf that's not a carnivore. So you put the X right there. So that's the diagram. The X in region 2 is the diagram for some wolves are not carnivores. Does that make sense? Look at that. Now, when you negate a statement here, what happens in our symbolization, in our Carroll diagram, is that whatever symbol you used for this statement right here, this, I guess you could say, positive statement, this affirmative statement, um, the X, if you falsify it, if you negate it, that X will turn into a zero. Remember right now, basically all we're using are X's and zeros. So the X will become a zero. This right here then switches over to being a zero. So if there's something in here, what you're doing is saying, well, there's not something in there. So that's why, that's why you go from an X to a zero. Now look at these two statements. They're logically equivalent. 
These are logically equivalent. Yay. All right. These two are not logically equivalent. Okay, I'm going to end on this note. Um, let's get a little more comfortable with Carroll diagrams. All right, we've been talking about them very officially, how to diagram standard form statements, how to test for logical equivalence, kind of the standard stuff you find on homeworks, yeah, given out by he or she shall be nameless. Okay, um, let's just do a little, let's, let's just say a few things about this. Let's say we begin with just a basic uh, four squares right here which means we're going to be dealing with two categories of two sets. Um, let's do, yeah, let's do dogs again. It's always good to do that. So we're going to be talking, so D is going to stand for dogs. And let's see, what other category do we want? Um, let's do uh, C for Cute, cute, and let's let's keep this cute animals, cute animals. Now there's something we haven't really talked about yet. It's called the C right here, and that is the universe of discourse. The universe of discourse. So, what that refers to is what's the overall set of things you're talking about? Now, you could be talking about the entire universe when you refer to your diagram, everything in the universe, right? So, that would be your universe of discourse. So that's the kind of the default everything. I'm talking about everything. Um, if I say everything is cute, then I'm saying everything in the universe is cute. Um, even here, let me go get something here. I don't know. Even this old clamp is cute. Wow, can you imagine this clamp? This thing's been beat, it's been used. Yeah, my dad put this tape on here for some reason. Okay. Um, um, so that would be the universe of discourse by default. But if we're talking about dogs, we're talking about cute animals, we're probably just talking about animals. So in this case, the UD, right, the UD, universe of discourse, would be animals. Okay? So I'm not going to be talking about clamps or anything. Clamps don't exist in this realm right here, regions 1, 2, 3, or 4. We're just talking about animals. All right, I could even make it even uh, more restrictive. We could say cute canines. We could even be more restrictive in that sense. But let's talk about animals. Okay, now if I want to say there are dogs, there are dogs. If I want to say that, the way I'd represent it is this way. I would say there's at least one thing in regions one and two. Talk about the whole region. There's at least one dog. And I'm not, by saying there are dogs, I'm not saying whether those dogs are cute or not. I'm not specifying that. So the way to do it using Carroll diagrams is this. We say there's at least one dog, but we don't know which region it belongs to. Or at least we're not saying, we're not specifying whether it's cute or not. So at least one dog. By the way, um, in Venn diagrams, it would look like this. You have dogs over here and you have cute, you would have um, cute animals over here, right? But I'm just saying, um, there's at least one dog. I'm not sure whether it's cute or not. For a Venn diagram, you put the X on the line. So I guess Carol could have put the X on the line, but that's not the way he did it. All right. So this is how we're saying 
there are dogs. That's how I diagram there are dogs. Cool? Now if I said there are um, animals that are not cute, then what you're going to do is this. You're saying there's at least one thing in this realm of non-cute animals. So you put an X here, an X here, and then you do the line between those two regions, saying, I'm not sure which way it goes, right? It's almost like a seesaw, right? Like, I'm not sure which region it belongs in, but there's at least one non-cute animal. So you put the X's like that. So that would be the diagram for there are animals that are not cute. Okay? Let's see. Um, let's try this. There may be, there might be, okay, um, let's see, non-dogs, or put it this way, there might be cute non-dogs. Now you're not committed to that, so maybe you think, maybe you think generally the only things that are cute are dogs or something. But you say, well, there may be. There may be cute non-dogs. So, um, so let's say, what are we talking about? Um, non-dogs who are cute. So that's region three. So we're talking about region three right here. But you're not saying that it actually exists. You're not sure, right? You're saying there may be. It's possibly the case that there's. So what you can do is an X with a question mark. This is not in the text, but you can do that. Okay. Let's do something else. Um, let's see. I have a dog named Stan. So we can say Stan is a cute dog. Yeah, he's cute. You've actually seen a picture of him rolling around like in one of those earlier videos. Okay, Stan is a, I'll show, I'll show a picture of him again. Stan is a cute dog. Now Stan is gonna be represented by a little s. He's not that little, he's like 55 pounds. But the lowercase s will stand for Stan, this individual Stan. Where does Stan live, so to speak? Well, um, he lives in the world, I get a set of cute things, cute animals, and then also dogs. Okay, so put, you put little s right there. Little s right there. Well, I should go back to the universe of discourse right here. If I specify the universe of discourse is animals, then I don't need to say cute animals right here. I could just say cute things. Right? Because that's kind of redundant, isn't it? Cute animals. Well, I'm talking about animals. So, of course, cute animals. Okay? Let's say anything else right here. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase some of this here. And let's consider something else. What if I do this? There are no there are no um, dogs that are not cute. Actually, we've already done this. So that's not really something new. You know how to do this one, right? How are you going to symbolize that? There are no dogs that are not cute. Well, that's not in standard form, so you might have to think about that a little bit. Um, but you're never going to find a dog that is not cute. So zero and two. It's the same thing as saying all dogs are cute. Okay? So hopefully this has helped you get a little more comfortable with using Venn, di um, Venn sorry, Carol diagrams. You can do quite a bit with Carol diagrams. So we're going we're gonna to be doing more. Um, the next video um, will be covering validity, the validity of arguments, how you can use Carol diagrams to test for validity. But I think that's it for now. Thanks.